people in under 24 hours, New South Wales will start to open up again after more than 100 days in lockdown. The easing of restrictions is good news for many sectors, including the arts and hospitality, who have been doing it really tough for the duration of the pandemic. Well, opening up doesn't come without its challenges. And for more, let's now bring in our Sunday panel. And we're joined by Adrian Kalith, who is the CEO of the Australia Council for the Arts. We're also joined by Wes Lambert, who is the CEO of Restaurant and Catering Australia. Welcome to you both. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Uh, Adrian, if I could start with you, there's a new campaign um, that you have. It's called Take Your Seats Australia, trying to entice people back into theatres and venues to celebrate the arts, shall we say. What's been the feedback uh, from patrons and from the venues? Uh, well, very positive to date, and uh, this is the Australia Council's contribution uh, to advocate for the single most critical thing that is going to ensure that the sector opens up, opens up safely and opens up with confidence. Mm. So we're very happy to make that contribution, and indeed uh, this campaign joins uh, a number of others uh, that have shown artists really um, compelling audiences uh, future audiences to be vaccinated and indeed their colleagues. Uh, so we're very happy to launch it and as I said, uh, confidence uh, around safety uh, is going to be really critical. Uh, our, our research is showing us that audiences are, are so keen to get back but equally uh, they are very conscious that they are going to be depending on on safe vaccination rates to entice them back into theatres, back into mm. galleries, back into all the places they gather. Where's Adrian there used the word confidence mm. and the New South Wales Premier Dominic Perrottet actually spoke about the importance of confidence for business in this reopening in New South Wales. How confident are business? Oh, look, businesses are very confident uh, on coming back after such a long lockdown, uh, nearly four months in New South Wales. Uh, they are ready for tomorrow morning uh, to welcome diners back into their businesses, uh, to welcome uh, diners back into their cafes and restaurants, uh, and for events like weddings to kick off again uh, and certainly get us from the 70 to the 80 and very quickly to 1 December. You know, Wes, uh, we love your optimism, but we've spoken to several businesses who basically say we're a little bit concerned about the fact that staff are very difficult to get hold of because people, of course, have left the hospitality, the entertainment, arts industry as well for work that's a lot more secure, work that won't be affected by future lockdowns, shall we say. So. What do you say to those businesses struggling to get staff back on? Oh, look, that is a major problem. Uh, throughout the pandemic, we've had a critical workforce shortage because working holiday makers left, international students left, uh, and skilled migrants left, many in the hospitality industry. And now with this long, nearly four-month lockdown, uh, we have lost uh, an additional amount of hospitality workers. Mm -hmm. Certainly, we're about 40% down from fully employed. Uh, and that will take multiple solutions on a state and federal level uh, short term to get um, the borders reopen and get people moving around again, uh, mid and long term to get Australians uh, skilled up and trained up uh, mm. so that they can uh, take a hospitality career, which is a very rewarding career. Adrian, are those staffing issues also a uh, problem for the arts community, given how insecure that industry has been over the last couple of years? Uh, yes, there are some skills issues and people leaving uh, the sector, there's no doubt about that. And interestingly, of course, arts and hospitality are so hand in glove mm. <laughs> that many of the experiences uh, across hospitality we'd be feeling in the arts. Having said that, um, a lot of the critical infrastructure is in place and ready to go. We've seen on the commercial side, Hamilton has already announced it's going to reopen, Come From Away is going to reopen, the Sydney Theatre Company is reopening this year, while a lot of our arts organisations have had to defer their program for last year. And it's very important that those organisations are there and ready to go. Mm -hmm. And as audiences return, then many of uh, the skills and talent that drive this industry, both backstage and front of house mm -hmm. uh, and elsewhere, 
will come back on board. So I don't underestimate it. It's been a real pressure. But as we have to look with optimism to the future, I think so many of our critical organisations are are good to go when things open up with confidence. When you say, Adrian, that they are good to go and Wes, you also say that businesses are ready to welcome people back again, you know, Adrian, I want to take you back to that comment where you said arts and hospitality go hand in glove, basically, but safety, as you say, safety is an issue. Confidence is needed. Uh, patrons need to feel confident moving in. You know, a lot of these venues are closed in. They're indoors. Are you seeing a lot more venues perhaps staging their uh, performances outdoors or perhaps indoor venues bringing in better ventilation? What sort of regulations that is or, or measures that's being put in place in venues, Adrian, that you can, you can perhaps expand on to get people to feel comfortable? Mm. Um, a couple of things there. I think, I think you know, fundamentally design of venues will be rethought from this point on and that's, mm. that's a a long-term challenge, which I've got no doubt will rise to. Um, but during that moment of hope, as I think of it, between COVID-1 and Delta COVID, uh, the sector did start to open up. Um, and, uh, and what we saw was confidence in audiences returning and a growing understanding that for whether it's galleries or whether it's um, live performances spaces, big or small, um, these are very carefully thought through and audiences uh, were very ready to wear masks, they were ready to socially distant themselves and uh, of course because most of them are really ticketed events we know everyone mm. in the audience and the backstage uh, disciplines around workers was really leading edge in dealing with the challenges of COVID. Mm. Mm. And as I said, what we're seeing in our research is very clearly people want to come back and equally clearly, particularly post Delta, they want proof of vaccination. And of mm. course, a number of major venues have already announced that they're gonna require that on entry. Um, Wes, how has the hospitality industry been dealing with this topic of vaccination, not just with the staff um, in their hospitality venues, but also in welcoming back customers? Who have you been talking to and how have they been dealing with this? I've spoken to hundreds, if maybe not thousands of members over the past four months uh, about um, vaccine status, about QR code check-in and masking. And the industry is ready for tomorrow. It is ready and prepared uh, for that three-step um, check. It's check the mask, uh, check the QR code, and check vaccine status. And hopefully, uh, Service New South Wales will have the one-step QR code ready, uh, hopefully by the 18th of October. And then for hospitality businesses, it'll just be checking masks and checking that QR code for the larger businesses at the front and for the smaller businesses uh, at the POS. You mentioned um, the checking of the vaccine status from New South Wales. It won't be ready until the 18th at this stage. Does that present a challenge and a problem for businesses in the meantime, given that it's the 11th tomorrow and that's the day that things will start to reopen? So look, uh, the New South Wales government and restaurant and catering have been putting out posters and fact sheets and FAQs uh, for about a week now to get businesses ready so that they have the right signage, so that they have the right answers, uh, and so that they can very gently deal with customers uh, and with staff uh, in a way that's COVID safe, and we can get those hospitality businesses back open, and we can get through this Delta strain and back to pre-COVID revenue levels. Adrian, of course, um, this relaxation of uh, restrictions comes at a time as the weather starts to warm up as well. We're gonna start looking at summer festivals now. But we still have border restrictions in place. How is that going to affect artists moving from one state to another? How is that going to affect, you know, the logistics of holding a summer festival? Look, it's a and festivals in the sector more broadly, Tarsia, it's a really good, really good question. We've learned many things um, through COVID, of course, which we hope uh, we can build into our thinking for the future of the industry. But right up there in what we've learnt is how interconnected this sector is. Mm. Um, Self-evidently, if you're talking about touring, whether it's regional touring, which is so critical, or national touring, uh, consistency of borders is going to be vital to getting 
literally and metaphorically the show back on the road. But also, um, we see also that artists need to be able to move from city to city, from mm -hmm. state to state. So this is going to be a challenge. There's there's no way of uh, of overcoming that in the short term. And as the sector opens up, I, I see one of the challenges being that New South Wales is opening up. That's hugely welcomed by the sector. Victoria is on the way to opening up, uh, though they've been less specific at this point about the way they're going to do it. I notice uh, today they've announced that companies can start rehearsing again, which is great to see. So you've got the two largest uh, states in the economy and certainly the uh, sector economy between them they sell about two-thirds of all tickets mm. in Australia uh, where you might see some mobility between those states and then not just with the art sector in so many things how the other states have enjoyed basically COVID zero for some time how they deal with that in the future is going to be one of the critical critical points but for the good of audiences for the good of participation uh, in the creative life of the nation, we do need to see borders uh, with some consistency to build that confidence. Wes, each state and territory seems to be running its own race at the moment. Do you mm. think what we'll see unfold in New South Wales as it starts to reopen and then in Victorian ACT will provide a bit of a blueprint and a map for other states and territories opening up or does that depend on the success of it? Oh, look, ultimately, uh, we've been calling on uh, the other five states and territories that are not in lockdown to be thinking about uh, reopening and how that's going to play out for all businesses. Uh, obviously, as the premiers uh, have said in the states that are in lockdown and are coming out, uh, that we have to learn to live with COVID and that COVID will be in the community for the foreseeable future. So it is yeah. very important that those states do get on board and do start coming up with uh, these ideas and these roadmaps. And I think uh, the success in New South Wales and Victoria and ACT, uh, both of vaccination rates uh, as well as the roadmaps and, and reopening mm. uh, will play a huge part in the other states getting reopened and getting Australia reconnected again. Uh, we're just running out of time for this segment, but I want to get a, a, a very quick sum up from both of you. Uh, it, you know, the pandemic has had such a huge uh, impact on both sectors, basically. Going forward, Wes, as you say, how do you think the changes that have been made over the last 18 months or so, what is going to be uh, changed going forward? What will be implemented and adopted, you know, permanently, Wes, if I could start with you? Oh, look, hopefully all of the restrictions uh, around COVID will go away uh, as we defeat COVID and learn to live with it, uh, just like every other virus and bacteria that we've dealt with uh, for the ages. But uh, the industry will come out more resilient on the other side. Uh, I know many businesses have uh, pivoted and added many more revenue channels like retail uh, and takeaway and delivery and uh, bespoke experiences and online sales as well as technological advances. And we think those are going to stay in the industry mm. and the industry will be stronger on the other end. Adrian, what about you? The adaptations that the art sector has made over the last 18 months, what do you think will be will, will look like for the next few years or so? Well, I think we'll attend to the lessons we've learned through this time of challenge and hardship. Uh, one is clearly the way the art sector pivoted to stay uh, engaged with its audience. So digital has been absolutely the momentum of that, it was already happening, but I think every arts and commercial organization is thinking about how do we add to the experience uh, through through the digital world and reach contact larger audiences, particularly around access. I think that's here to stay. I think the point about seeing this as a, a national industry, as part of the broader creative industries is really going to stay and it has forced uh, in the best sense, much more collaboration between state and federal jurisdictions in terms mm. of funding and thinking through what we want. Um, so looking optimistically to the future, I think these things uh, we can build on. And I think it's also made us think very long and hard about where the skills and talent are generated that keep some of our systemically important organisations and the audiences they attract going. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm hoping that you'll see a much higher degree of collaboration between federal, state and local governments 
uh, in building these communities. And one last thing very quickly, you don't know what you've got till it's gone sometimes. <laughs> and, and the social and economic impact of the creative industries has been deeply felt by their absence. Yeah. And particularly in regional Australia, and Wes will you know, under, understand and respond to this. Mm. It is so critical to the mm. life of regional Australia as well as the big cities. Mm. So in the most challenging circumstances, there's a bit of a blueprint there for the things yeah. that we really have to think hard about in mm. coming months and years. Mm. It's been great having both of you on the show. We'd love to have you back perhaps a couple of months down the line to see where we're at with all these uh, restrictions being eased. Thank you so much for sharing your insights with us. Adrian Collett, CEO of the Australia Council for the Arts, and Wes Lambert, the CEO of Restaurant and Catering Australia.